we are at the Laughing Heart Hostel. We're here for another day. Hopefully tomorrow we can start hiking. We're waiting for one of our packages. Um, one of our sleep system is not here yet, so we're stuck. You were supposed to start hiking today, but... We were supposed to come here to take two days. I was going to do my taxes and uh, get them finished off, but I think I had a miscommunication with my son, so... Um, that didn't get done. We got some other things done, but of all the packages that we sent here, we got three packages. Um, they all arrived at the same day. And then the last package, it still is not here yet. So we're hoping we're going to go to the post office when they open tomorrow, see if we can get that package so we can start hiking. So, but we're going to answer some questions that some people had. So Okay. So we have a lot of questions about food, but um, one of the questions uh, sent to me via email came from Jo Beth. She was asking what kind of preparations we did prior to hiking and um, what we did about shipping them to us. So, uh, first of all, um, it wasn't dehydrated, it was freeze dried. So, in one of our earlier videos, I mentioned that we had had a freeze dryer. Um, we got a freeze dryer, it's been a while ago that we got it. It wasn't for this purpose originally. We got it for a different purpose. And um, uh, after the COVID, hit we weren't able to do that at that time and so we started freeze drying some things uh for this trip so, and after we got we spent quite a bit of time freeze drying um probably a year actually freeze drying things and it was just mainly it was just whatever we ate leftovers would get freeze dried i just make extra of it and then myla uh put them all in packages and yes. set them up as far as when we got them one thing we found out though is that we've sent ourselves way too much food so we're trying to get that figured out and also it may look like <clears throat> in our resupply box it may look like the foods that were uh shipped to us were all cooked by jeff i actually cook too it's just that when i cook i just cook for the two of us so it gets eaten but when jeff cooks he cooks for the whole neighborhood he cooks a big pot so a lot of our freeze-dried foods were made by him. So, just wanted to clarify that. I also cook. She doesn't cook. <laughs> I cook. <laughs> so, um, the other thing was that, yeah, um, you were right, Joe Beth, it was steak, it's not jerky. We have had jerky, but that was just store-bought. Um, we don't have anything to do jerk, make jerky with. Um, that has to be dehydrated, but the steak we had was actual steak, and it was just freeze-dried. Okay, so another question from Thomas Gale via email. He was asking about um, uh, how I take video. So we have a GoPro Hero 11. I actually didn't get a lot of time to kind of play with it before we left Colorado. Um, so I have been just watching YouTube videos on how to set it up. In the last video that I posted where we took videos in Max Patch, for some reason I selected something so the screen was smaller. But um, it's GoPro Hero 11, I think that's mm -hmm. what it's called. And I have a Filmora app. That's what I use for editing. It's a lot easier for me because I actually have uh, Filmora for regular videos at home. It's in my computer. So I'm familiar with um, the software so it's a lot easier for me so that's why I, I decided to choose that GoPro has some sort of editing tool as well but it's kind of pre-programmed and it has music and all that switching of, of you know images and I didn't care for that I want to be able to just show you guys the trail so that's what I'm using um, I hardly take videos using my phone but I do take pictures so I can send it to my daughter right away or just keep it for memory. And also Jeff and I, we've never taken selfies before. But um, now that we're on the trail, you know, sometimes we wanted to just capture the background. And I still haven't figured that out. The, the pictures that I've taken using my phone as selfies are really close. So we, you can't really see the background. You can just see our faces. But... Uh, it seems like the GoPro is working just fine. Another question uh, from Laurie from the YouTube um, page. Could you talk about your cold weather clothing, both hiking and sleeping in your footwear? 
Your umbrella is definitely a great gear choice right now. So cold weather clothing. So, so far for hiking, we really overestimated the cold weather clothing that we would need. Um, <clears throat> generally, I'm, I hike in this. It's a Smart Wool 250 base layer and just a shell. And it's just an REI uh, shell. It's not heavy duty or anything like that. So, and that's it. That's all I'm hiking to, hiking with. Now, when it gets down to uh, in the 20s, I've hiked with this, a Patagonia R1, and the shell. And that was it. I only did that for one day. And it was maybe, maybe it was in, it was in the lower 20s. We were on the shady side of the mountain. But once we came back around to where the sun was on the mountain, I had to take it off. Because it's really easy to overheat. So I just, just this right here is what I'm hiking in. Uh, the 250 fleece, a shell, um, just a regular REI soft shell pant. And I had boots I was hiking in, but they were way overkill for this. I was expecting a lot more snow, um, a lot more cold than what we got. It, it has been cold in, on occasions. It's got down into low teens. I think this is about as cold as it's gotten. Um, but the boots uh, that we had were definitely overkill. Uh, they were very hot so we've gotten rid of those and we moved on to trail runners and um we'll see how those those work out so that's pretty much it as far as the clothes I, i've sent the r1 back i i have one other layer um and now i have uh the, the other side of that is when you're not hiking when you first get into camp is once you stop you can get cold really fast you can get chilled and because you're exhausted you know that fatigue sets in and you're really cold you're hungry probably dehydrated and you can get chilled really fast the the uh puppies that we had are great shoulder season coats but i don't think they weren't winter weight so i've gotten some uh winter weight a couple winter weight puppies and then i sent home um sent home our puffies we sent home our uh fleece our i had an r1 i think you had a rab mm -hmm. that you sent home mm -hmm. um and i also have that you had the light heart too yeah but I, you sent that home too right yep. early on I so i sent home. the light heart light heart gear home um and so when you get into camp you're just going to want to put that puffy on a good winter weight puffy especially in this weather and so you can stay warm and so that's uh we're going to be using that so and as far as clothing goes that's that's about it yeah yeah for me when i get to camp i put my is it, is it called base layer yeah you already got your base layer yeah up. so um and i got, i put my puffy so i don't get cold and if it gets really cold i like to put my my mittens and we also have that what do you call those those shower gloves yeah they're, they're really cheap gloves but they've been they've been great they've been outstanding they're they're uh it's a japanese fisherman's glove and that you can buy them on the website show i'll make sure if you get them that you at least size up one size at least one size if not two and um they're they're waterproof they've kind of got like a like an acrylic lining let me show them yeah Okay, so this is the these are the gloves. And main, mainly these are just all that we've been hiking in. Even when it's been really cold, these are the Showa uh, Temrus 282-02. And so they've got a gauntlet here that you can close off. And then they've got just that lining, just like a I don't know, like an acrylic lining. They're really easy to dry out. Just turn them inside out. We pop the fingers inside out on a nice day and just hang them off the back of the pack. And in a couple hours are completely dry but even in the coldest these have done really well and it's so nice to be able to set up um your tent or whatever if it's raining taking down your tent if it's raining when you have these on because your hands aren't going to get wet mm -hmm. and cold so these have been great really enjoyed these and they're they're pretty cheap too I remember somebody was asking if our feet get you know cold with the boots that i had my feet stay dry and, and warm never had problems with yeah after our beats with with, with our feet mm -hmm. whenever it was cold we never did get the feet never you know we never got soaked they would get 
wet from the perspiration from the inside out, mm -hmm. but um, uh, we were never cold. So we have switched to trail runners, but we've got some seal skin socks and we're gonna see how that works because there was just too many days in a row where it was just warm one day after another after another. And then this just not long before we got here, it was in the upper 60s, even warmer, and it was climbing, going up those mountains. Um, it was just hot. It was very hot. It was hot. so hot, yeah. So we're going to use some trail runners from here on out. Okay. Um, Steve uh, said, after an amazing month, how are you feeling about your daily progress, the path ahead, and what are some of your biggest lessons so far? So, um, yeah, we're not moving too fast. We've been moving kind of slow. And we know that we've just been trying to take it real easy here because we don't want to get injured. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing we have ran into, and part of that what I think was due to the boots, and part of it was um, shoe selection after the boots, but um, uh, we ran into some, some foot issues. So at mile eight, my feet start to hurt. My um, heels start to hurt really bad, and it just makes it difficult to walk. And so we're doing you know, 10 or 13 or something like that. You get into camp and your feet are just screaming. So foot issues, uh, haven't been able to make, haven't been able to uh, push very many miles, not comfortably, and I don't want to push it to where I injure myself to where I have to get off trail. So those have been some of the issues. What was the other one? Biggest lessons so far. Biggest lessons. Eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you can, yeah, eat, yeah. eat and eat a lot and drink, drink, mm. yeah, because uh, you'll get dehydrated. I know that's one of my problems is when I'm hiking, I won't be drinking, and um, I need to drink a lot more. So a lot of times now when I come across water, I'll stop and drink and then refill. I think, I think was it like third week, we started to feel like we're getting depleted. Yeah. Um. I think for me, when I'm hiking, I, I don't eat as much, you know, generally. But um, we're trying to really get a lot of calories. I've already lost 10 pounds. Yeah. One of the things that we've been doing that's, that's helped out just recently is um, I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard to, I mean, dinners we have figured out. Mm -hmm. We got that figured out. But breakfast and lunch is still kind of, you know, we don't really have figured out. But what we have done now is... Uh, we put uh, we we do analgine every night, a hot analgine, and I, that's one of the other things. I got one of those lights, a lightweight analgine bottle. It's just one of these, and these are the lightweight ones, and you can put boiling water in them. Um, and I put boiling water in that and put it in the bottom of the sleeping bag. And it's not it, originally I got it just because if the temperature drops, you know, a lot past what the comfort rating is on my bag, then that'll boost that that uh, that comfort rating. But um, I just use it now just to put my feet on because it just feels so good on my feet just to have that hot bottle. But what we've started doing is I'll make oatmeal the night before, put it in a talente jar, and throw it in the sack, the roll top sack that I put my Nalgene in. And in the morning, then we can wake up, we can have oatmeal and coffee or whatever. So that's been working out really well. We're trying to get as many calories as we can in the morning. So it'll fuel us at least till the afternoon where we stop and you know we can have snacks or whatever uh, another question how do you keep umbrella attached to your pack I've heard others make their own clip to hold it but wasn't sure the best way to do it by Michelle so uh, we also made our own so I'll show you here really quick right here what we have is I just uh, um, see. yeah it's gonna be kind of maybe tough to see but I just took this here i use one for my water bottle so i'll keep my water bottle over here over here on the left and then the umbrella will go here on the right but it's the same kind of thing and it's just uh some bungee and then i have some cord locks and so you just tighten them down here and on this one here for the umbrella i have this for the top and then this one here for the bottom handle and then you can adjust how far you want the umbrella to go back you know, you can leave this one out and pull this one in and it'll pull it forward or pull this one real tight and it'll push the umbrella back and then this one not as tight. And it keeps it in place pretty well. So that's just all we have for that for the uh, for the umbrella is just a little bungee with the cord locks. 
And I, since we already have this bag here, I also wanted to tell you that I clip my camera here. I have a, a, a way to hold it or clip it. It's just like an alligator clip. You squeeze down yeah. and put it on there. And so it clips on. most of my my videos where I'm walking is just attached to here. But if I wanted to show you a view, I, I just hold the camera. What are you using for a camera and do you use a separate microphone? So I don't use a separate microphone. I just watched a YouTube video a few minutes ago. And um, I guess there is a way for you to block all the wind noise. The wind noise. So I'll figure that one out. But no, it's just my camera. I don't have any attachment to it. And this is has been a question by many people. Yeah. Why are you hiking without poles? Yeah, and this was uh, uh, walking off the crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I watched I watched uh, you last year, and uh, you had really nice. Uh, videos there and it was it was sad to see they had to get off trail for injuries but so why no hiking poles so initially um i really thought that hiking poles would work and i did some research and um i bought hiking poles and i got some really nice hiking poles i really wanted them to work really thought that they were going to work great for me and uh watched all the youtube videos and everything and uh how to use them and this and that and i used them and uh, I used them many different times, and they just did not work for me. Like, just didn't. And um, uh, so I'm not saying that I'll never use them again. I might decide, hey, you know, maybe I need another pair or something. Maybe, but I there just can't be that much difference in hiking poles. It's just a stick, you know, pretty much. But I don't like them. I don't like using them. I don't like having them in my hands. <laughs> I don't. I just really can't think. There's a, there are things, and I know that they work really well for my wife because she's going downhill. She her her knees hurt, and so she uses them to you know pick her way downhill. Mm -hmm. My knees have never hurt. I don't have any issues with my knees. I go up hills. I go down hills. Um, before I did you know started hiking, I was running a lot. You know, and uh, I never used did trail running. Did all that. Never used any poles or. Uh, anything like that at that time um and i've just never had any any knee issues uh so uh i don't know i just don't like them maybe <laughs> i who knows i might try them again someday but right now i don't think i'm going to well and also wanted to add that um you know we created this youtube channel for family and friends and so we have something to watch later on when we're done and when we're old and can't hike anymore. Well, but, we're already old. <laughs> or you're much older. But anyway, um, but we wanted to thank everyone for subscribing to our channel. We didn't realize it's gonna be it's going to be this big, you know. So we really appreciate it. Just wanted to let you know that. The Smokies were beautiful. There were mm -hmm. parts of the Smokies that I've never, you know, seen that type of uh, forest before. It was just it yeah. was like a rainforest it was covered in moss it was just absolutely beautiful and water was coming out of everywhere even out of, in rocks. out of crevice yeah there was a cracked rock <laughs> that, that that i got water out of just because it was so interesting <laughs> they were just shooting out of the rock um and then if you watch the video seeing all the ice that we had now for those of you that, yeah we know we needed micro spikes we thought we had them in the box when we got the box at fontana it didn't have them in there so and when, then when we get to Gatlinburg, we, we didn't, yeah, yeah, we didn't even think about it. Yeah. yeah at that just, point, at that point, we didn't even think about it. We got into Gatlinburg yeah. and we went and got our shoes. And the main thing on our minds was shoes because the boots that we had were just too doggone hot. Mm -hmm. And so we went in and we got some, uh, our shoes, didn't even think about the micro spikes at the time. And then we got up there to Newfound Gap and that's when we got into all the ice. But we only got into ice that one day. So we mm -hmm. had about, I want to say eight miles of ice. Mm -hmm. uh, that we had to uh, negotiate our way over so and it was difficult and uh, you know it was dangerous but we tried to make it as safe as possible and you know picked our lines every time we uh, found some ice and there was nothing that wasn't that we couldn't traverse so it was fun actually well it was interesting it was fun it was very memorable mm -hmm. and we didn't neither one of us slipped or fell or had any kind of other issues but I would definitely recommend anybody else, yeah, make sure you got your spikes and when you get to, get to the Smokies. So, um, what else do we got? We got any, like, favorite pieces of gear? Oh, I love my, I love my rain gear. Yeah, you your know? rain gear? 
Yeah. You know, I, I really like my rain pants because if it's windy, if it's cold, you know, and if I want to keep my regular hiking pants clean, I can sit on anywhere <laughs> on, you know, a wet log and I won't get wet. I just, I just love it. It keeps everything dry. I've never had issues with my feet getting cold. My hands get can get cold, but you know, I, I have my, my 282 gloves. We actually have, uh, we've got some enlightened equipment mittens. Yeah. Um, and we both kept them. They're really lightweight, but, um, I've used mine once mm -hmm. and that was when I got into camp and that was the only time I used them. Um, and they're, they're warm. They're warm enough. They're odd, odd fitting. If you've ever seen them, you know that they look odd and they're just odd fitting. It's hard to like grab things, <laughs> grab things with them. Um, but the gloves, the gloves worked out great. And then they're like 20 some dollars, you know, and they're just, yeah, I can't say enough about the gloves. Gloves are really like that Nalgene. It's like a, the Nalgene is just a little over three ounces. That has worked out great. I got, when I heat up the water at night, I've got uh, uh, water for the morning. I can put my feet on them. It's it's just really nice for my feet. And um, yeah, so the Nalgene, I really enjoyed that. Our uh, umbrellas, I love those umbrellas because uh, when it's raining, if it's raining, coming down, it's coming down hard. My pants have no problem shedding the water. My rain pants. Um, the front of my jacket will catch water and it'll soak. But if I got my, if I have my uh, umbrella on, the entire top of me will com stay completely dry. I won't have any water at all on me. So that's been that's been really nice to be able to walk without getting water in my face, without getting water soaked through my shoulders and my shoulder straps. Um, so yeah, that's another really thing. That's another thing I really enjoyed. Uh, our sleeping bags have been were great. So, uh, always, I've never been so far on the trail. I've never been cold, mm -hmm. not, not while I'm hiking and not while I'm sleeping. The only time I've ever gotten cold is when I've come into camp and I've stopped and, and I haven't gotten my, uh, my other layers on. Now, what I have now, after I sent, I had a Mont Bell, uh, plasma 1000 down jacket. And that, I think those would be great for a shoulder season, fall and spring, but it's just not a winter. It's just not a winter puffy. So I got us a couple of winter puffies from uh, Feathered Friends. The reason I got it from Feathered Friends is they did such a great job making those sleeping bags. You can look at the, the workmanship, the craftsmanships on, craftsmanship on those. And um, they're made in the U.S. It's a company in Seattle. And they just, they just really go above and beyond. So I got some coats from actual winter weight coats from them. And they're going to be, I know they're going to be really warm. So you just see, feel those things are super warm. I think somebody asked a question about the bottles, the water bottles we're using. So oh, I'm going to show bottle. that. Yeah, too. grab one. And it's just a regular uh, Sinoc or Kanak, however you want to pronounce that. And then uh, what I did, so you don't have to, you know, take them out to drink. Uh, it just makes it a little easier. I just uh, got a smart water bottle cap. Drilled a hole in it, the same size as the outside diameter of some uh, silicone uh, tubing. And then I just put one of these, it's like a, I don't know, like a, I forget what they call them. Got it on Amazon, it's a little, just like a little IV lock. And you can lock that down and uh, so it won't leak. And it just makes it easier so you don't have to lift it out. You just pop that open and then you can drink out of it. Now, I also have the same one for my, uh, I got a Sinoc water bladder. And what I use that for is you can refill these with that. Um, I generally don't though, not anymore. But what I do like it for is I can fill it up, put it in camp, put my filter on it, and it has this as well. And then I can open this up and it'll just, I can wash my hands, wash my face, whatever I need to do as far as washing and cleaning up. And then you can, you know, if you just want a little water to come out, you can just adjust as however, however much water you want coming out of it. So that's all that is. And it's, you know, super easy, just a little silicone tubing and one of these little, I don't know what they're called. It's almost like a little... IV thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, anyway, that's all the questions that I I saw. So if you guys have any more questions, just let let us know. We appreciate you guys watching our videos. Have a good day. All right. Bye.